Hi, I'm Ed Fain, president of Friends of Sugar Creek. Hi, I'm Mark Elrod, vice president of Friends of Sugar Creek. And I'm Chris Moore, the MS4 coordinator and soil water foreman for the city of Cromsville. And we're here to talk about soil water and how it affects the watersheds of Sugar Creek. Uh, first, I want to talk about how everything works in the city of Cromsville with soil water. Uh, there's inlets, curb drains, storm structures, and manholes that collect all this storm water on rain events. Everything in town is, comes to a storm system. Could be in the middle of the road, could be a side ditch, could be downtown. Uh, to help understand what storm water is, storm water is rain runoff that comes from impervious areas such as roofs, streets, ditches. And everything leads to a stormwater system, which in turn is any inlet structures in neighborhoods that collect rain runoff on the street will collect there and then dump into a main storm system, which in turn takes it to an outlet pipe, which in turn goes to a watershed that may lead to Sugar Creek or does lead to Sugar Creek. We have three tributaries in town that collect all this stormwater runoff, uh, Dry Branch, Walnut Hills, and little little creeks that have no names. Uh, from there, we try to maintain the storm the storm structures through the city of Carlsville by making sure they're not clogged on rain events to get everything flowing like they're supposed to be and not cause major flooding. Uh, the key things we look for are branches, grass, leaves, which are a nuisance to the stormwater system. Uh, and how many how many major storm drains are there in Crawfordsville that go either to a dry branch or Sugar Creek? I this mean, is one major one here, right? This is one major system. It's been probably been here since 1930s, and it's brick line. How big around is this drain? Uh, this one is 42 inches, I think. Okay, so wow. Big. And what all section of town does this drain? This this specific storm drain comes from Wabash Avenue and collects everything from the west of Lafayette Avenue. Hey Crystal, what are we going to do? Uh, what activity are we going to do today? Uh, today, just to show everybody when rain runoff hits the storm drain, you can kind of figure out which way it flows. So we're going to add some dye tablets, which will turn the water green. Uh, I got the help of my sweeper on the stormwater side to kind of help push the issue quicker with dumping a lot of water in here to help trap where the water goes. And then people then follow, will follow the water or the dye uh, down to where it enters Sugar Creek, right? Yes, sir. Right down north to Creekside, and there's an outlet discharge pipe right there, and we can watch it come out. So, Mark, what if people want to learn more about MoCo Adopted Drain? Uh, they can either uh, call the city street department and they can help them adopt a drain for themselves or you can visit uh, .org, um and we have a link there to the MoCo adopt a drain uh, .info, uh, kind of master plan of all the um, all the drains uh, throughout the city and which ones have been adopted and which ones haven't and the odds are there might be one in your neighborhood that has not yet been adopted. Chris, what would adopting drains help you do? It helps me keep track of how they're being taken care of as far as are they cleaning them like they're supposed to, uh, letting me know if it's, something's breaking down that I can come here and look, inspect, make, and make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. All right, so after you have adopted a drain, we ask that you clean that drain out uh, two times, roughly two times a month, or after major water events when we know that things from the neighborhood can move their way down and clog that drain. Um, so after you've cleaned them, you can go back to that same website, uh, mocoadoptadrain.info, and you can report any problems with the drain, if there are you know physical structural problems with it that are adding to the problems of uh, poor drainage, or you can, and you can also report um, 
what you've collected out of there. Like what are the typical debris or trash items that occur there? And we get that information and it helps us make better decisions for the future. And with the city, that helps me keep track of how do I prioritize these drains as far as which ones get fixed first if there is structural problems with them. And criteria, if it's in the roadway, it's more of a priority than if it's in the ditch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump probably 30 tablets in here to kind of help get a good color of the dye tablets, tracer tablets coming downstream. And then we can drive down and watch it come to the creek. This test demonstrates how quickly the dye from the storm drain flows into Sugar Creek. Everyone knows that trash is no good for lakes and rivers, but many people unwittingly contribute to water pollution because they do not understand that natural debris like leaves, grass clippings, fertilizer, road salt, and pet waste become pollution when it hits the water. When these natural pollutants break down, they become food for algae, causing it to grow out of control. Water from storm drains flows directly into our watersheds without treatment. When you adopt a storm drain, you can be part of the solution. Keep your neighborhood storm drains free of debris and help save our Sugar Creek watershed.